Good afternoon. This is the World News on Aliyamoye TV and Radio. I am Dauda Folani Muiza. Here are the top stories. I am Poliwale Sofia. President Buhari directs of outgoing officials to declare their assets. Shetima warns beginning of Tinubu administration might not be worse. In business, minister unveils Nigeria here. Says 35 aircraft expected in next five years. On the foreign scene, 15 mourners taking body for burial die in Cameroon road accident. In sports, Tyson Fury offers Anthony Joshua September fight deal at Webby. Details of this and more coming up shortly. Welcome back. Now, the news in details. President Muhammadu Buhari on Friday directed all outgoing officials to declare their assets. In a statement by his special assistant on media and publicity, Garuba Shehu, President Buhari said his strict adherence to the constitutional requirement of asset declaration before and after taking office was aimed at strengthening best practices. Speaking in Abuja, after collecting his form from chairman of the Code of Conduct, Buriu Aiza Muhammad, the president said no one was excluded from the constitutional duty of asset declaration. He noted that asset declaration raises moral standard in public service and helps to build integrity and combat corruption. Also speaking, the CCB chairman, Aiza Mohammed said compliance by the president in the last eight years and the support he gave to the Buru has enabled it to achieve 99% compliance by elected and appointed officials. President Mohammed Buhari says the conduct of the last election was a proof that Nigeria has arrived politically. President Buhari spoke on Friday at the President Mohammed's Muhammad Buhari spoke on Friday at the presentation of a book titled A Promise Kept, a Compendium of Significant Achievements of Muhammad Buhari Administration 2015 to 2023. The president said the All Progressive Congress has accomplished all its outlined goals, adding that the last elections were transparent as Nigerians voted for candidates of their choices. He lauded the citizens for not being influenced by money during the election, noting that this and the administration wanted to build a solid political culture in the country. The federal government has declared May 29, 2023 as a public holiday to commemorate the inauguration of the next Nigeria president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The Minister of Interior, Rahuf Aregbeshala, made the declaration in Abuja on behalf of the federal government. According to a statement by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Shuai Belgore, Aregbeshala commended Nigerians for their faith in democracy as expressed in the nationwide election that produced the president-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his vice Kashim. Shetima. He called on Nigerians to continue to support and promote democracy through adherence to, his, to the rule of law and uphold all democratic institutions. As Nigerians look forward to the government of incoming president Bola Ahmed Tinubu, his vice Kashim Shetima has warned that the administration may not be off to a rosy start. Speaking at the 2023 presidential inauguration public lecture at the National Mosque Abuja on Friday, Shetima noted that removing petrol subsidies and ending the multiple exchange rate system are issues that will pose the initial challenge. The incoming vice president assured that the Bola Tinubu's administration will treat all Nigerians equally, irrespective of political religious, and ethnic differences. Shetima said the administration will hit the ground running, stressing that it does not have the luxury of time as the challenges facing the 
three are humongous. The Supreme Court has dismissed a suit filed by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, challenging the alleged double nomination of the Vice President-elect Hashim Shetima. The Epes Court on Friday agreed with the lower court that the PDP lacks the local standing of the Institute to institute such a case. Justice Adamu Dawuro, who read the judgment, noted that the PDP acted as medicine interloper and a busybody as the matter is an internal affair of the APC. A sum of 2 million naira was awarded against the PDP, even as the suit was dismissed for lacking in merit. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar says the Supreme Court dismissal of the case of the PDP against Kashim Shetima is not a setback to his quest for justice. Atiku, who made this comment on Friday via his official Twitter page, said the party's legal team are ready to prove that the election of February 25 was fraudulent, did not comply with the constitutional requirements and the electoral guide guidelines. The PDP flag bearer added that the announced winner was not even qualified to contest the poll. The former vice president urged his supporters to exercise patience and conduct themselves peaceably as the party diligently conducts its litigation at the presidential election tribunal court. A former petroleum resources minister Daizami Alice in Madweke has sued the Attorney General of the Federation and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for alleged label. The former minister is demanding for 100 billion naira to be paid in our damages, according to a writ of someone filed on her behalf at the Federal High Court Abuja by a team of lawyers led by Mike Ozekome. Son. Alison Madreke is also demanding that the EFCC and AGF apologize to her in three national days over what she described as the false, injurious, malicious, and rebellious publication against her since she left Nigeria in 2015. Both EFCC and AGF were given 14 days from the service of the summon to enter their debates. Governor of Ogo State, therefore, Abiodun has dissolved the State Executive Council in preparation for his second term inauguration. Governor Abiodun announced the dissolution of the cabinet this Friday at a valedictory council meeting held at the ESCO Chamber Governor's Office, Okay, Mosso, Abel Okuta. The governor expressed appreciation to them for working towards the successful implementation of his administration's building our future together agenda. Members of the cabinet who spoke at the meeting include the deputy governor, engineer Noimot Salako, the head of service, Mr. Kola Wale Fagbomi, commissioner of education, science and technology, professor Abayomi Aribabu, and commissioner for culture and tourism, Adija Adeleye. They commended the governor for finding them worthy to serve the people of the state. You are listening to the world news on Aliya Moye TV and radio. Still to come, business, foreign, and sports. Welcome back to the rest of the news. In business news, the federal government on Friday unveiled the national carrier Nigeria Air in the country's capital city, Abuja. The unveiling ceremony was aired at the airline's operation center, situated in the Inambi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. Speaking at the event, the Minister of Aviation, Adi Sirika, said the partnership with the Ethiopian Airline Consortium, the preferred bidder for Nigerian Air, will connect the market of both countries. Sirika said a demonstration flight will commence as soon as part of the procedure to commence operations fully. The minister added that the more aircraft are expected to arrive until the airline reaches the 35 aircraft mark in the next five years. On the foreign scene, 
15 people in Cameroon taking the body of a loved one for burial died Friday when their minibus was involved in a crash with a lorry, the transport minister said. Transport Minister Jean Ernest Masena Ngali Bibi said the lorry driver also died in the accident and three people in the minibus were injured. The crash happened in the industrial city of Idia, about 80 kilometers east of the country's economic capital, Douala. Sports. In the world of sports, WBC World Heavyweight Champion Taisi Fury says he wants to fight the fellow Briton Anthony Joshua at Wembley in September and has sent him a contract. The 34 year old has not fought him since stop, stopping Derek Chisora in the 10th round at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in December. A fight with Alexander Uski, the IBF, IBO, WBO, and WBA champion was expected to happen in 2023, but fell through. On foreign news, one of the last Fugiti fights sought over the 1994 Rwanda genocide for Jens Kayeshema appeared before a court in the South African city of Cape Town on Friday. Kayeshema was arrested on Wednesday, following 22 years on the run. He allegedly took part in one of the genocide's bloodiest episodes when thousands of men, women, and children who had sought shelter in a church were slaughtered. The 62-year-old denied any role in the massacre after being quizzed by a local journalist before entering the packed courtroom. At the end of a short hearing, Magistrate Ronel Olivia remanded him in prison custody and adjourned the case to June. Second, to end the world news, a quick recap of the major stories. President Buhari has directed outgoing officials to declare their assets in compliance with the constitution. Vice President-elect Kajim Shetima has urged Nigeria not to expect a rosy start with Sinubu administration. Said top decision has to be made. In business news, Minister of Aviation Adi Sirikao on due national career nigeria yes said 35 aircraft expected in the next five years on the foreign scene 15 mourners taking body for burial died in cameroon road accidents and in sports tyson fully offered anthony joshua september 5th deal at wembley the world news was edited and produced by oluwa fisayomi ajibola i am oyewale sofias I am Dauda for learning Isa. Thank, Thank you for, for listening, listening and happy Children's Day to every child. child.